Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm in a different room. Um, I'm in my living room. Look at this bougie ass water I made myself. <laughs> so I don't know where I'm gonna title this video, but basically there were a bunch of crafts I wanted to do all at once, so I thought I'd put it all in one video and show you Show, show you me, show, show me, show me making the crafts so you can also make them if you want. I've been seeing a lot of trends that I would like to participate in, but I don't have uh, the money to buy like a $14 headband. I'm gonna show you how to make some, some stuff. So I thought the first thing we'd start with is boot like Brandy Melville shirt. Now I've never owned a real Brandy Melville shirt. And also this definitely isn't an original idea. I made the mistake of looking it up on YouTube and found lots of girls who had already done this literal exact craft. But, so I went to Target and I was looking for just like a plain white t-shirt. I later on found that they put, that Brandy puts this patch on like a lot of other different styles of shirts. But I like, I feel like the first time I ever saw it was like the classic cap sleeve white tee. And they were like $8. So then I went to the kids section and I found this extra large white cotton tee for Okay, it's turning on. It's turning on. Okay. So, uh, so as you can see in the pictures, it's not like high, high up, but it's not like in between your boobs. It's kind of like mid toddies. Now I don't know. I think that's like centered. Like, that seems about right. Safety first, if you're a kid, get uh, get some parental adult supervision before you start working with hat glue guns and irons and all that, all that hat hat stuff. Yeah, the shirt was four dollars. This patch was like two or three dollars. This is literally the same butterfly, like the dots and all the. It's the same butterfly. I wish I could get the antennas to like honestly freak it. Oh, got it. 10 seconds. <gasps> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <gasps> I've had things that I've ironed on before, and like over time, they just kind of start to peel off. So if you just kind of like hand stitch it around a little bit, um, it'll help it stay in place longer, have more longevity. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand. Cute! I'm gonna put it on. Oh, I want to talk about my my shorts. I got these shorts at Walmart, okay, and they're literally like the softest, cutest shorts. Like they're they feel expensive, and they were six dollars. 
I think sometimes it's like a mind over matter thing where it's like if I saw those shorts at like Urban Outfitters or like a Brandy Melville, I'd be like, and they were like $30, I'd be like, yeah, makes sense. They're super soft. But it's like, I found them at Walmart for $6. And so our first craft is done. Cute. Cute headband at Urban Outfitters that was like, like a gingham, almost like a faux scarf headband. And it was really cute. It's $14. I don't want to pay $14 for a headband. So I went to the Dallas store. I was trying to find just like plain headbands. Couldn't find them. So I bought this headband and then I stripped it naked and this is what it looks like underneath. Perfect, exactly what I need. I did I did a mock-up of this headband uh, last night. I was literally working for like five hours trying to figure out how to make this happen. So you're going to need three pieces. This is two, fold it over of 16 inch by three inch wide pieces of non-stretch fabric. One piece of nine and a half by two and three fourths folded over like that. Also, if you want like more thorough instructions, you can like just like look up a YouTube tutorial on how to like fabric wrap a headband. But so you're gonna wanna put a little dibbly dab of glue right there on the inside and then you're going to want to take the single piece of fabric and you're going to want to boop see so it's just covering the inside tip of that headband and you're just going to want to wrap it just like around the length of the headband and just kind of pull it Try to be sure it's center so there's like the same amount on both sides and just kind of pull it taut on the one side and It's a probably a little longer than you need it to be. I just I like to make everything I'm making a little longer than it says just to Just to give myself a little dumb bitch leeway, you know, you're just gonna want to repeat the first step and put glue on this little inside part. And any excess fabric we can just cut off. Take your scissors. And this like doesn't have to be perfect at all. Um, this has like a lot of like excess fabric around the area where it was glued. I'm just gonna kind of sloppily trim off the stuff that isn't glued down so you see the difference this side has like all this excess and this side is like a little more trimmed up so now you have both both parts trimmed and you're just gonna go in and make little and make little snips see these little flaps I made they're just so you can glue down this inside and then we're gonna cover this piece anyway with another piece of fabric, so don't worry too much about being perfect in this craft or in life in general. So while I'm cutting this, let me tell you about a fun story. I got an email a couple days ago from Wix. Y'all ever heard of Wix? It's kind of like Squarespace or I don't know, it's like, it's like a website thing. This would be a great segue for a sponsorship, but it's not. I got an email a couple days ago that was like, thanks for signing up for Wix. Cool, but uh, didn't sign up for Wix. I thought maybe it was just an advertisement. So I just didn't, I just left it. Then last night, I start getting emails that are like messages I'm getting on Wix. And like, someone liked your post on Wix. And I'm like, excuse me? Some whack ass person used my email like my, it's like kind of like my business email to open a Wix a, and, and like all their posts are like these like weird motivational things. So I go to like contact Wix and you can't contact them unless you sign in, which apparently I have an account. So I signed in and I just changed the password because obviously like I don't, I don't know what this stranger made the password. 
and then it's like i guess i can delete the account but i almost feel bad like it's like all this like meditative good vibes shit so maybe they just thought like self-soothing was i don't know it's like cl clearly this isn't your email like you, they could have made an email called like self-soothing 745 and use that like why would why would you use an email that you isn't yours? Why would you use an email that you don't have access to? While I'm talking, you're just gonna want to just put a little dab of glue on the inside and then you're just gonna wanna take the flaps and you're just gonna wanna start pulling them in, laying them all down. You see what I'm saying here? Okay, so while I'm doing that, let's keep talking. So yeah, so like I changed the password and, and like these are like the posts were made like earlier today. Like, Ma'am, it's 2019. Please get your own email. I just decided to write Wix and I'm like, hey, somebody signed up for this account using my email and like it ain't, it ain't me. And that was last night and I still haven't heard from them. And then like an hour later, I get an email. Hey, it's, it's Wix. We, uh. We heard you wanted to change your password, so here's an email to reset your password. This stranger filed a password reset to an email they don't have access to. What did, what did they think was gonna happen? What did they think was gonna happen? Like, like I was just gonna be like, oh, hell yeah, dog. I'm sorry I changed the password on you. Let me, um, let me make it something that you'll know so you can sign back into your Wix with my email that isn't yours. Like, what did they, what did they think was gonna happen? Like, didn't they know that it's like, you have to go to your email to change your password, but that's not their email? What? And this is not the first time a stranger has just like used my email for something. Is that common? Does that happen to like, I don't know, like social media people where like, you know, you have like your business email out there. And people just use it to like fucking sign up for like Neopets or something. On Instagram, you can like verify your email and then you, it does like something. So for the longest time on my main Instagram, I didn't have my email verified because every time I tried to enter it, it would say this email's already in use from a different account. I only have three Instagram accounts. One of them's like a private Finstra, and then there's my main one, and then there's just like this rando one I have. That was like an old art project thing. And I never realized that I had been getting these weird emails that were from Instagram, and they were like legit Instagram, not like weird Instagram hacker emails. But they were in another language, um, but I just always thought they were spam. So then I started to look into it, some account that like barely had any, any follows or anything. And then I think on one of the emails, it was like, is this not your email or should you not be receiving these emails or something? And I was like, yeah, these, I, these definitely, I should not be receiving these. This isn't my account. And I got my email back. And so now that's the like business email. Cause you know, I'm like a, a big business woman. I'm like, you. You can't just do that, my guy. Like, you gotta get your own email. It's hot glue strings everywhere. So, here's the finished headband, all wrapped up. Honestly, we're like this, like, super cute. But that's not the tutorial. So next. The next steps, you can either use a sewing machine or you can use hot glue, fabric glue, like iron-on. Um, they make, like, tape that you can like put on fabric and then iron it and it like bonds it together. I'm going to sew this. So I just have these two pieces here um, and I'm just going to just sew it all around. Okay. I'm just pinning the pieces together. There's definitely probably a lot of better ways you can do this, but I'm not gonna do any of those. This reminds me so much of a game I used to play on, I don't even remember what it was called, Wario's World, or I don't know, some like DS game that was like Mario themed and it had all these like mini games and challenges. And there was one where you had to thread the needle. 
and like the needle would like move around. Again, you don't have to be perfect doing this because literally ain't nobody gonna see it. After you sew it, you just gonna turn it inside out, which is kinda difficult. It's kinda, you just, you just gotta get your fingers in there. We're gonna do the knot. Knot, knot! So, same thing. Now, remember, this one isn't two pieces separate. This is one piece folded over. I did that because I think it adds a little less bulk. So there's not as much seam, so it's easier to make the knot. I don't know if that makes sense. I also realized that if you snip sort of a longish, skinny triangle, it helps take some of the bulk off the ends. Wow, this is literally the worst DIY channel. So you just kind of want to cut a shape like that. I don't know what you call that shape. Probably just a mistake. You're just going to want to do that on both sides. I'm sorry if none of these instructions make sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put something on my leg. It's an ant. <gasps> Why is there an ant on me? Forget to leave a little opening um, at the end of whatever it is you're making. Like this one, I have this end sewed, and this end is open, so you have a space to turn it inside out. Oh, yeah. Eh. All right. Oh my god, it's so heavy. It's such a nightmare. <gasps> oh my god. Oh, I forgot to. <gasps> I realized I forgot to sew up the end. Glue it. We're mix. We're mixing mediums here. So you have your rectangle. I would turn it to the side and like pull seam is running down that part. And then you're just gonna kinda wanna kinda, kinda wanna uh, center it so it's like centered. Just a little baby dot of glue in the little middle of the headband and then Get it right, get it right, get it tight. Now I'm gonna put a little glue right here and then just kind of uh, pull these two ends in. So they're like that. Urban Outfitters, I'm coming for you. $14 for a headband, my ass. I'm a DIY queen. You can't stop me. I'm gonna run you out of town. Take this weird shape we've made, I fold it in half, and then in literally no particular way, I just make a knot. Put it on top, find the side that looks cute. You already know what it is, we gon' hot glue it in place. A dot of glue right there. I'm honestly tired of doing crafts. I've been crafting for, I was crafting for hours yesterday. Why is my phone going dark? Oh my god, it's dying. Okay, cool. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, my phone died, so I had to charge it. So we finished the blue scarf headband. I made the executive decision not to put the rickrack in it. I think it's like kind of renaissance era-ish, which is like, I hate to use the term on trend because like, ugh, I've been seeing padded headbands come on to the fashion scene and I'm obsessed with them and every single one that I find on Etsy is like $35 and I'm sure it's beautifully handmade but I made this for like $1 so I'm very lucky that my mom is a crafty person. I already owned the fabric that I needed for this one. I already owned quilters batting um, but it's still not very expensive even if you have to buy those things. Uh, to save time and memory on my phone. <laughs> I laid down the headband on just this quilter's batting and I just made a little mark from one end, rolled it, traced it, I cut it, but till I got to the other end and then I just cut that out. You can make it as padded or as not padded as you want. This one I think I had two or three layers 
Um, and I think I want it to be a little taller, especially like in the center. I want more volume there. So again with the hot glue, this doesn't have to be perfect. We're just gonna cover this all in fabric. And maybe this isn't the best way to do it because I literally couldn't find a tutorial on how to do this. So I'm just making this shit up, dog. Like, I don't know. Ah, so tired of burning myself on the hot glue pen. I have a couple more pieces cut. So I think I'm just going to on the top. You're just trying to create like the height on the top that you want. done a beautiful on trend padded headband okay this fabric isn't near as forgiving as the plaid because you can see a lot more of it It's looking very like a handmade sale meets like middle school play wardrobe. Again, you're just gonna start gluing shit. <laughs> Ooh, try not to burn myself when I'm ticking and hot gluing. I would probably pull the fabric tighter around the ends here and then Maybe just a smidge less tight around like kind of the, the top, the crown part that you want to have a little more height. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if this is gonna work out. I finished the red headband. It didn't look good. It's, I think I miscalculated some measurements. And I'm also getting very hungry and very tired of filming. So, if you look at it from like back here, not bad. Um, it's a little, it's a little rough around the edges. Um, I definitely prefer this pattern, but I feel like once it's like. Hold on. Uh, okay, yeah, you can still see how bad it is even on my head. Okay, but from like sort of far away, it's really cute, right? Like I love the silhouette that they give. That is all the crafts I have for you today. Um, I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Okay, bye.